Good evening and welcome to this choral evensong for the fourth Sunday after Easter from St Paul's Cathedral in Dunedin. Welcome to all of you from here in Dunedin and around the world who are joining us as we prepare this evening to give our worship to God in word and song, to hear the word of the Lord and to offer ourselves a living sacrifice in God's service. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same, by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. Through the fire. 
The angel who talked with me came again and wakened me as one is wakened from sleep. He said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a lampstand, all of gold, with a bowl on the top of it. There are seven lamps on it, with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on the top of it. And by it, there are two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these, my lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered me, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my lord. He said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, Not by might, nor by power, But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, And he shall bring out the top stone Amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Here endeth the first lesson.
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulphur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God, and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Here endeth the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, 
upon whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
name of the living God, who is holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. In our reading this evening from the Revelation to St John, which I have to say is one of my very favourite parts of the Bible, we're given the vision of the things to come, the day when all things will be reconciled to God and made new. And we're shown this restoration and rebirth of all creation, when finally God will bring to fruition all of the promises and plans for the whole of creation. And it's a reminder of where we are now and where we are going, of the fact that what we build today is not permanent, that there is a letting go which we must do if we are truly to inhabit the incredible inheritance which God gives us. There will be pain in the days ahead as we realise some of the things we have had to give up and some of the things we have lost as we've been engaged in these special measures to protect our nation from the Covid virus. There will be many changes to the way that we do church as well and some of the things which we hold precious may change, may grow, may be overturned altogether. And yet tonight we are brought back to the realisation that church as we know it is not the be all and end all. That before we can see the holy city, before we can see God face to face in the new Jerusalem, there is also some laying down and some letting go, some weeping to be done and some mourning. There are things which we must stop clinging on to as we reach out to take God's hand leading us forward. But there is great hope and encouragement too for the days ahead as we are reminded of the God who will be with us, the God who will wipe every tear from our eyes. And in this season of Easter, most especially of that heavenly realm where there will be neither death nor crying, but life everlasting. It is to that heavenly vision that we continue to look as we move back out into the world to live, to love, to grow and most of all to declare God's love in word and deed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world. As you call Zerubbabel to rebuild, you now call us to reach out, to restore, to rebuild, to go and proclaim and live out your love. We pray for our archbishops and for Bishop Stephen, for the clergy, the lay ministers, the people of this diocese, and our brothers and sisters in all of the churches here in Otago and Southland. May we work together in that building of your kingdom to which you call us ever onwards. May we restore those things which have been lost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray for the things that have been lost and torn down. For lives and livelihoods which have been broken. We weep with those who have struggled and feel lost. And we look towards the day when you will restore all things. When sorrow and crying and death shall be no more, but only life everlasting. Surround us with your love. Give us your compassion that we may reach out and care for those around us. And keep our eyes fixed firmly on the vision of the heavenly Jerusalem. The reconciliation of all things. Which continues here on earth today our words and actions. Guide us by your Spirit as we seek truth and mercy and justice for your people here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be among you and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen.